On October 14th of this year, Microsoft is forcing millions of users into an upgrade trap with Windows 11. They're imposing arbitrary requirements on perfectly good computers by mandating the use of a TPM chip and demanding that you use a Microsoft account. I was recently helping a family member with their Windows 10 PC and discovered that even their computer was incompatible with Windows 11 simply because it didn't have a TPM chip. And for all of you Windows 10 users watching this, wondering what can I do about this? I have an operating system in mind that's just for you, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Windows 10 initially launched in 2015 as the successor to the very forgettable Windows 8 platform, and almost immediately users flocked to the new operating system and I can't blame them. Windows 8 was that one X that you wish that you could forget about. People fell in love with Windows 10 and enjoyed the more classic Windows layout, featuring the start menu on the left, just the same as in past generations dating back all the way to Windows 95 as well as the Windows 10 File Explorer with easily accessible shortcuts. Not to mention the modern features like virtual desktops, touch support for mobile devices and laptops, as well as the proven stability of Windows 10 over the years, which many consider way more stable than Windows 11. But I think the biggest point of them all is the compatibility of Windows with a huge array of different devices, both older and newer, without the requirement of a TPM chip or secure boot. Over the past 10 years, people have become very attached to Windows 10 and even preferred over the newest Windows 11 platform platform, which features a newer, more modern layout with a start menu in the middle and an overhauled file explorer, which in my honest opinion is a bit clunkier than the Windows 10 interface. But in the case of Windows 11, with some good comes a lot of bad. Microsoft made an announcement that they will be ending support for Windows 10 on October 14th, 2025, which will in turn stop any and all security patches and updates. Unless, of course, you want to pay Fat Stacks Billy G your sweet, sweet money for the extended security updates program. But let's face it, it's ridiculous to pay for security updates unless you're a corporation reliant on Windows 10. So the only option is to be forced onto Windows 11 and I know Windows users would rather not deal with the insane bloat and other issues plugging Windows 11, but if you aren't aware of those issues, let me name a few. First, like I mentioned, the incompatibility of perfectly good computers being rejected from updating just because you don't have a cool kids badge to join the Windows 11 club. Some other issues are inconsistency of the UI, namely the control panel and registry editor, the uncontrollable ads that are thrown in your face as if they didn't have enough data collection about you, most of all bloatware apps telemetry and even Copilot are front loaded onto the computer before you even get anything set up. I know if you're anything like me, then you're sick and tired of Microsoft playing around with your computer and treating it like it belongs to them. What if I told you that I know a way to avoid all of this data collection and make your computer yours again? The answer, my friends, is Linux. Linux doesn't have a requirement for TPM chips or secure boot. Linux doesn't even care about being installed on a computer. You can almost literally run Linux on whatever you want. You own your copy of Linux, say what gets installed, you say what runs in the background and what doesn't. It's all yours to control. All that I ask of you is you control your finger down to the like and subscribe button. At this point in the video, you might be on the fence about Linux, so let me explain why you should absolutely take the leap and go all in. The first point I wanted to talk about is the stability and security of Linux with regular updates and no forced restarts. Depending on what distro house you get sorted into, your OS could have updates and patches weekly, also known as a rolling release distro, and these would be like Fedora and Arch. But like I mentioned before, you get to choose when and even if those updates get installed. Second is the compatibility. Linux works right out of the box with most modern hardware like webcams and other peripherals. Meanwhile, drivers for CPU chipsets, graphic drivers, and even print drivers are all easily as available as the Windows version drivers. Then there's gaming on Linux, and while many Windows use users still think that gaming on Linux just isn't there yet. Thanks to Valve's Proton compatibility layer, thousands of Windows games run on Linux just fine. AAA games like The Witcher 3, Cyberpunk 2077, and Elden Ring all run perfectly fine, as well as competitive esports titles like CS2, Rocket League, and Dota. And even retro indie games run perfectly fine on Linux. And if that's not enough, then maybe the crazy amounts of customization will sway you towards Linux. You can make Linux look and feel like Windows 10, Mac OS, or even a basement dwelling wannabe hacker's dream setup. You can pick and choose your desktop environment down to the window manager. I won't go into the details for all of the environments, but some of the most popular include GNOME and KDE Plasma. If you find yourself not able to figure something out, well, you're not alone. The community support for Linux is not hard to find. There are hundreds of active forums, thousands of video tutorials, and plenty of general help always available. But just like Windows 11, with the good, there comes plenty of bad with Linux too. 
there's a decent but not unreasonable learning curve that comes with Linux. Some people prefer the point and click approach to their file management. And for those of you who take this approach, the file folder structure is very different between the two OSs. Windows uses a letter-based multi-tree structure with separate root directories in each partition like C drive or D drive. And in contrast, Linux uses a single unified system hierarchy that starts from a single root directory designated as a slash. To give some examples, the directory C slash user slash username in Windows would be slash home slash username in Linux. Another point of contention for Windows users is the software gap. Some apps like the Adobe Creative Suite and Microsoft Office just don't run natively. Not all hope is lost though, and you can still use programs through a compatibility layer called Wine, or you can use a service called Bottles, but I won't go into the difference of these in this video, just know that they allow you to use Windows apps on Linux. But aside from the software issues, there are also some hardware issues. Some Wi-Fi cards, printers, or specialty devices need extra setup. These usually don't take too much effort to get working though, with a simple driver download and install. The last downside of Linux is kind of a flex though. There are simply too many distros and this can overwhelm newcomers. But don't worry, if you're new to Linux, I'll have some suggestions just for you Windows users who want to ditch Microsoft a little later in this video. But the good thing is that Linux is not a one-size-fits-all approach like Windows. I do know that Windows has different additions to fit different use cases like Home, Pro, or even Server, but in all, it's just the same with different built-in tools. Meanwhile, Linux is whatever you make it. If you want a workstation, then there's Ubuntu. If you want a powerful gaming station, then there's Bazaar or Fedora, or even a home server, then and there's Debian. And now that I'm mentioning distros, we should get into the ones that would work for you Windows refugees. While it feels like there are infinite choices and combinations for Linux distros and environments, I'm going to focus on the ones made specifically for people switching from Windows. My first pick would have to go to the classic Windows refugee distro, Linux Mint. Linux Mint looks and feels very similar to Windows, especially with the Cinnamon desktop. The start menu on the left and the system tray on the right are exactly where you would expect it to be and is identical to Windows. 10, as well as the taskbar. Any open apps will appear at the bottom just like they would on Windows. If you open up the Nemo file browser, you see that it works very similar to Windows Explorer. Left hand side navigation, drag and drop, right click menus with easy shortcuts for documents, downloads, pictures, etc. As well as network share capabilities like Windows shared folders, and they work right out of the box. My second pick would be Zorin OS. Zorin comes with a built-in Zorin appearance app that lets you easily switch different desktop layouts instantly. One option mimics Windows 7, 10, and even 11, complete with the start menu and bottom taskbar. And with Zorin appearance, you can also tweak themes like light and dark modes and icon packs without even needing a third-party tool. The file explorer Nautilus, in this case, is largely the same as Windows with the same capabilities as Mint, so I won't go over it here. And lastly, my third pick would be Ubuntu. Instead of mimicking Windows, Ubuntu offers a dock on the left side with pinned apps like the Windows Taskbar. The Activities Overview works like a mix of the Task View and a Mac OS Mission Control, showing all open apps and workspaces. Pressing the Super Key or Windows Key opens a launcher or search bar, very similar to hitting the Windows Key and typing in an app name or whatever you're searching for. Apps are organized in a grid like Windows 11 Start Menu, and Ubuntu also uses Nautilus for the File Explorer, so you won't be missing out with this distro. Now, out of the box, Ubuntu uses a distinct orange and purple theme, but you can easily switch to dark and light themes and extensions let you tweak the desktop to look more like Windows with a bottom taskbar and a start like menu if you would want to. But if none of these Linux distros piqued your interest or even the idea of moving to Linux seems way too overwhelming, then there are still plenty of ways you can still enjoy Windows 11. Now there are plenty of tools to help Windows 11 feel just like home. And the first one you can try is called Start 11. This was developed by Stardock and is designed specifically to restore the classic Windows 10 feel back to your Start menu and can even revert it all the way back to the Windows 7 Start menu, as well as moving the Start button and Taskbar back to the left side instead of the center, although this is now a built-in setting in Windows 11. But let's say you prefer a combination of Windows 7 UI and Windows 10 UI. Well. Start 11 lets you do that. And on top of all this, it's customizable with themes, transparency, and layouts. The only downside is that it's paid around $6, but for many it's worth it. 
to undo Microsoft's design choices. Next up is Explorer Patcher, which is thankfully a free and open source utility that restores the functionality removed by Windows 11's File Explorer and Taskbar. It brings back the old right-click context menus instead of the simplified ones that bear useful options under way too many menus in my opinion. It also lets you use Windows 10 style taskbar with labels, small icons, better multi-monitor support, and gives you back the drag and drop feature on the taskbar, which Microsoft removed in early Windows 11 builds. Last but not least is WinArrow Tweaker. This one is also free and a super powerful tool that lets you access dozens of hidden Windows settings Microsoft doesn't expose to their users. It lets you change system fonts, icons, and spacing to mimic Windows 10, as well as disabling annoying features like recommended content in the start menu. On top of all this, it lets you re-enable classic context menus for a file explorer ribbon and adjust animations, taskbar size, and other UI behaviors. There are plenty more apps like this, but I chose these three since they're among some of the best for Windows tweaking. But that's going to do it for this video. If you are going to switch, let me know which distro you're going to use. And if you'd like me to make a video about how to tweak Windows 11 to behave more like Windows 10. And don't forget to join the Discord down in the description.